I'm going to show you how to measure color using a PicoDev color sensor and a Microbit V2. We'll connect these two together and get some example code running so that we can measure both emitted color from a colored light source and reflected color from a colorful object. By the end of this tutorial, we'll even be able to identify what kind of colored object we're looking at. Let's do it. To follow along, you'll need a Microbit V2, a PicoDev color sensor and adapter for Microbit, and a PicoDev cable to connect them together. It's also best to have some colorful objects to measure the color of. I'm using some colorful fruit today. First, plug your Microbit into the adapter and make sure the buttons are facing up. Connect your PicoDev cable to the adapter and connect the other end to your color sensor. And I've mounted everything to this PicoDev platform to keep it nice and steady for the rest of the tutorial. Finally, connect your Microbit to your computer with a USB lead. Next, we'll download the example code as well as the drivers for this device. Find the download section of the article and you'll see three links. Right-click each link and select Save Link As. I'm saving my files to a PicoDev folder in My Documents. We're going to use Thonny to program our Microbit for this tutorial. If you haven't used Thonny with Microbit, check out our Getting Started Guide for that. And if you prefer not to use installed software, check out our guide for python.microbit.org for programming the Microbit in your web browser. Open Thonny and navigate to where you've saved your files. And connect to your Microbit. Select the first file with a left click, hold down Shift, and select the last file, then right click and upload to Microbit. And we can see under the Microbit menu, our three files have appeared. Let's open up main and take a look at it. This is our example code. Just briefly in this example, we first import the device driver and we also import a function to sleep or create a delay. There's something called fruit list. We'll get back to that later, but we next initialize the color sensor as color sensor. And then in an infinite loop, we call color sensor.read RGB. That reads the red, green, and blue components of the light that the sensor detects. We split them up into three variables called red, green, and blue, and then we print those values in a print statement. This script is ready to run, so press Control D to restart your micro bit, and you should see some blue, green, and red data streaming up the shell. You'll also see that data in the plot to the right. If you don't see the plot, go to View and Plotter to show that plot. Light can be measured in terms of red, green, and blue. These are the contributions of red, green, and blue light that mix together to create the color of light that the sensor is seeing. So under my ambient studio lights, we can see that the dominant colors are green and red with a little bit of blue mixed in. And that kind of makes sense because green and red creates yellow and we're, we're in a bit of a yellowish light here. I have here three LEDs in red, green and blue and these have a very pure color. So if I shine the red light on the sensor, we can see a big spike on the plot for the red value. I'll shine the green on and we'll see a green spike as well. And now I'll shine the blue on and we can see a blue spike. So this RGB measurement is really useful for measuring emitted light, like light emitted from these colorful LEDs. So what happens when I hold a colorful object over the sensor, like this orange? Well, there's not, there's not a lot of intuition that this reading gives us. We can see we have some blue, a lot of green and a lot of red, but there's not a lot of information there that tells us that this is an orange. It has the color orange. Now you'll also notice if I move the orange away, the values change a lot. And that's because brightness information is locked up in these red, green, and blue values. So the RGB mode really useful for measuring those colored lights, but for things like this fruit or like some other colored samples, we might need to look at HSV or hue, saturation, and value. HSV separates color into hue, saturation, and value. Value is the amount of light, how, how bright that light is going to be. A very low value would be completely black, and a very high value would be really, really bright, like blinding bright. The saturation is how strong the color is. You could almost think of saturation as a scale from pure color all the way down to gray. What we're most interested in, though, is hue, and hue is the type of color, nameable colors like red, green, blue, orange, yellow. That's what we're interested in for objects like these fruits. I'll comment out example one by highlighting everything and pressing Alt three. And then under example two here, I'll uncomment everything with Alt four. Now let's have a look at what's going on here. We call color sensor.readhsv for hue, saturation, and value. And we stored the results in a dictionary called data. We can extract the hue by calling data hue. 
And then we call another function called classifier hue, and we store the result in label. Finally, we print the label and we print the hue. Let's give this a go. Since I'm editing the file stored on the micro bit, I'll just press Control R to restart and run the new script. Now in the shell, we have a color label, in this case, yellow, and we have a hue. Now this hue is an angle between zero and 360 degrees, and this angle corresponds to a color on the color wheel. You would have red at zero degrees, green at 120, and blue at 240. So that means if I hold this apple over the color sensor, we have a hue of about 26. And that makes sense because this apple is pretty red and we're getting a hue that's fairly close to zero and it's being classified as red. So now if I shine the red LED on, I have a hue of about 26 with the label red. The green has a hue of about 98 with the label green. And the blue has a hue all the way up at about 230 with the label blue. Nice. So we can really easily use that classify function to tell us what color we happen to be looking at. So this hue classification function measures the hue, finds the hue angle, and then returns like a color label of the nearest to nameable color, like red, yellow, green, blue, etc. Here's the thing, we can give this classify function a custom list of hue and label pairs. And that's where fruit list from before comes in. Fruitlist is a Python dictionary that has key and value pairs. So here we have a key called apple, and I'm going to associate that with the hue of about 27, I think I measured. I don't have a carrot, but I do have an orange, and that orange has a hue of about 45. So I'll change that 60 to a 45. And here I have a nice green line, and that has a hue of about 62. So I'll change that to 62. Last step is to pass this fruit list into classify hue as an argument, and that is hues equals fruit list. Finally, restart the script with control R, and we are now running our custom fruit list. If I hold the apple over the sensor, we have an apple with a hue of 25. If I hold the orange over the sensor, we have an orange with a hue of about 46 and a lime with a hue of about 70. So now classify hue is taking our fruit list, it's measuring the hue from the sensor and it's finding the nearest match in the list that we gave it. So there you have it. We made a fruit and vegetable sorting machine using nothing but a color sensor and running a little experiment to capture those hues to create our fruit list. If you make anything cool from this starter project, we'd love for you to share it over on the Core Electronics forums, and that's also the best place if you have any questions. Until next time, thanks for watching.